After years of political deadlock, the European Union is voting on legislation to overhaul its asylum and migration policy. The reforms have been in the works since 2016, and they're aimed at easing pressure on southern countries like Greece and Italy. It comes as the annual number of migrant deaths in the Mediterranean continues to grow, with more than 3,000 deaths last year alone. Well, the reforms would implement stronger border controls while also ensuring that all EU countries share responsibility for handling asylum requests fairly. Under the new system, those who arrive without proper documents would face detention and accelerated deportation if their asylum application is rejected. Children as young as six years old will be fingerprinted. And rights groups have raised concerns, saying this will create a cruel system that amounts to having prison camps on EU borders. We can now speak to Camille Lacoz, who's an associate director of the Migration Policy Institute Europe think tank, joining us from Paris. Welcome to Al Jazeera. So this pact aims to get EU countries, all with different national priorities, to act together on the issue of migration using the same rule book. How likely is that? I mean, this pact has gone through years of talks and compromises. Yes, this is a, the culmination, you know, the peak of years of negotiation um, on, on the topic that's, that's probably the most sensitive one at the EU level, especially as you know, we're, we're not entering an electoral campaign with um, the European Parliament being renewed in June. And, and so these are agreement, like the votes that's playing out today, it's a political signal for the European project that policymaker can come to an agreement on how to manage migration together, um, you know, with a, in a way that is binding. And you mentioned this, this solidarity principle. Um, this is also a major political win for this European Commission, um, given that this negotiation, this reform has been in the making since 2016. Having said that, um, it's also an agreement that's tougher uh, on asylum seekers, that's tougher on, you know, what, what, what's going to happen uh, at EU borders. And it's also, in a way, a political agreement that fails to answer many of the challenge, many of the issues that EU is facing when it comes to organizing a comprehensive migration policy, um, speaking on labor migration, for instance, you know, attracting students, attracting workers, um, but also creating safe pathways for refugees so that they don't have to go through this dangerous route and can find, you know, safety in Europe um, in, in a manner that's, that's better organized, better managed that, than is today. Right. And uh, we do have an update, in fact, uh, uh, Ms. Lacoste, that we're just hearing now that the EU Parliament has indeed adopted this asylum overhaul. So what's your reaction to that? And are there any sort of gray areas in the pact uh, for you that stand out? Yes, it's no surprise that, that this is adopted. Um, you know, in, in a way, the fact that EU member state had come to an agreement put the parliament in a difficult position. Um, they were asking a way to, to tag along um, the position that had been agreed with the member states. Um, now the key question is what happened with implementation? This, this is a text that's extremely complex that you know, we'll have two years, you know, the timeline uh, set by, by, by the tech is two years for implementation with many open questions as to what what is it going to look like at border points? Um, what safeguards are going to be in place to monitor the situation um, in the different processing centers? So I think there's still so much that needs to be um, that needs to be discussed, um, that needs to be uh, set up. And, and we're also seeing that this clause of solidarity, um, making it mandatory that everyone needs to contribute to this system, either through relocation uh, with asylum seekers arriving, you know, in the country of first entry, um, being um, being split in a way uh, between different member states or through financial contribution. Um, all of the system also needs um, to be to be implemented, to be operationalized in a context where these questions are, you know, um, <laughs> um, immensely um, sensitive. How, how do you think that this is going to affect migrants who are actually making these treacherous journeys. I mean, we know from the IOM, the International Organization for Migration, that 2023 was the deadliest year on record with about 8,600 deaths. I mean, why has there been an increase in migrant deaths recently? There are many reasons why, why we're seeing this, this increase. And, and first, I want to say, like, the IOM recorded 4,000 deaths in the Mediterranean, but it's very likely that the number of deaths is much higher because so many boats are unrecorded and 
there are also many deaths, you know, along this route in Libya, in Tunisia, and, and, and elsewhere. Um, what we're seeing is increasingly um, constraint put on, for instance, NGOs that are rescuing people at sea on their operation. Um, they can only do, you know, one trip, one rescue operation at a time, um, which, of course, leads more people to lose their life, uh, to lose their life at, at sea. And at the same time, we're also seeing condition in several of these countries of transit that are deteriorating. I'm thinking, for instance, um, about Tunisia, where in the past years there's been increasing, you know, harassment of migrants from sub-Saharan Africa. And so, in all of this context, um, there is a question: How do we make sure that we we organize? How can we organize um, safe pathways for people, for migrant workers, for refugees? so that they can travel in a way um, that they, they don't have to risk their life. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us uh, from Paris. Camille Lecos, thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.